Building in a Small Town, where we're talking to entrepreneurs, community leaders, policymakers, and more to find out how they're building things in small towns. I'm your host, Shelby Smith. to uh, hear your stories and hear how you wound up in a similar situation living above a commercial space that you run a business out of. Um, I feel like we have a lot to talk about I do. in that respect because it is, uh, it's an adventure, yeah. as you know, oh, yeah. but uh, sometimes when you can blend the work and life, it's a good thing, it's a good balance, mm-hmm. uh, but just figuring out what works for both of you is important. Yes, yes. So anyways, I usually start with people's story you guys are neither of you are from Slater you are transplants for mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. um so Mel why don't you start with where'd you grow up yeah um, and how did you wind up in Boomtown Slater mm, yes long story but I'll try to keep it brief I uh, grew up in Jefferson Iowa so it's about 45 50 minutes from Slater and um yeah graduated there in 99 and um met Russ in 2007 in Montana so I, you know, lived there, and that, that was in 2007 that we met. We married right away, like four months later in 2008, March of uh, 2008. And Russ owned a carpet cleaning business in Montana, and I was just visiting family there, and uh, we kind of got placed in the same room on purpose. Um, he knew I was coming, but I had no idea if he existed. <laughs> so you had time to prepare. She had none. I did. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I knew she. I made them promise though that they wouldn't tell that they. It would just be Natural. no pressure yeah. Yeah. at all. But yes, I saw <laughs> pictures even of Mel and um, and EJ who was seven at the time. Yeah, my son. Yeah. So yes, we we uh, we met and we went on our first date and got married four months later. So that worked out. Um, but yeah, he owned a carpet cleaning business and so um, I owned a home and had a son and was in school so it was it made more sense for Russ to, to come this way yeah. when we got married and so he sold the business in Montana and started it over in Jefferson and um, I joined you know him in that and I also was working in Carroll at the time so um, for a couple years or a year and a half I think and then um, yeah we decided I think uh, I don't know 2011 shortly after our our son um, was born uh, that we needed to get closer to a higher populated area you know for uh, carpet cleaning so we were looking all over really we looked in Norwalk we looked in Ankeny we looked Ames I mean Waukee we were just open we just needed to be closer to the city but we love small towns so I didn't really want to be in the city city so anyway, our realtor uh, was at the time was in Ankeny and had open enrolled her kids in Ballard and had just tons of good things to say. And so Huxley ended up being our home from 2011 to 2019. And in, uh, in that, we went full time with carpet cleaning. Carpet cleaning, um, the business grew and I uh, was his full-time scheduler and he was the only one and only technician for a lot a long long time and um, Still still yeah, and then uh, we had the opportunity actually to clean in this building that we are in now and uh, We got the heads up that it was coming on the market for sale and We had just gone through the like pre-approval pre-approval process of building maybe like a shouse or something because we kind of knew we wanted to keep our home life and business life together um, so that kind of all worked out when we got the heads up that this building which I'd never been in before but Russ had been and just loved it you know it's just a very special renovated building and he's like he would just love it so when this lady called me she's like yeah this is going on the market and I'm like oh 
maybe not. <laughs> maybe we'll just buy it. So we kind of had the idea going to, we were on our way to Florida. Should I tell the whole story? You can't, it could, it could get long. It was, it was, it was a, time. You can tell the whole it was a pro, it was a process it's getting a into though. the building. Tell the story. Okay. I would like to hear the story. So yeah, we, we, um, we were traveling to Florida. We were, we knew that we were losing Russ's mom. And so we were going down there for a couple of weeks to be with her in her final days. Um, but on the way, we get this phone call from the homeowner of the building. And, you know, she's, she says, I need you guys to come in and clean. I'm about to list the building. And so she sent me like 20 some pictures via text message. So I could at and least I, see. And I had been in here. Yeah. I'd cleaned in here a few times. I'd been in and it, taken the first time I came in. I took pictures all, it's just neat. It's just really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I've been in a lot of homes and buildings and everything and there's just not, I'm not often in a building that I was just struck by how cool it was. I was, I was amazed at how well it was restored and it was just, it was just really neat and interesting. And I never imagined we'd, we'd buy the building, but, um, but I, I remember send, sending Mel a bunch of pictures coming in in 2014. Mm -hmm. anyway. So yeah, so so the homeowner sent me a bunch of pictures and and you know her price point was within our reach, and so we really truly believed that we were going to just return home and pursue buying the building. She assured us that we could have because we 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 sort of knew her. We had a bit of a business mm -hmm. relationship, with some some rapport with with um, Shelly, and then we like her. She's been in the coffee shop. Yeah. And, um, and anyway she assured us that we would be the first ones that would get to see the space. So we thought, yes, cool, we're just gonna go, we're gonna give her even a full price, asking price, we can do this, we wanna be in the building. And it just, we ended up, um, Well, it, you're just giving a Go hint. ahead, go ahead. So, so when we get to, um, we get to be with Russ's mom as we're losing her, we share with her the pictures and everything that was sent and we're confident that we're gonna make this happen when we return home. And she was just so proud and happy, you know, for us and um, ended up passing away. And when we returned, literally the next day, uh, we come to the building to take a tour through it and learned that it was hitting the market that day. We didn't know that it was going to hit the market. We just thought this was all going to be taken care of, you know, outside of that. There was multiple people even here. So there like was like starting 30, to filter in. There was like 30, 30 showings that day. We were the first, but yeah. you know, there was like people going through as we're still here. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, wait a minute. And anyway, they it, ended up telling people, gather your best offer. We're going to, you know, you'll have three days to put that together. And there was like eight, eight at least eight offers that we were up against and we were not the strongest offer at that time. So it did not work out for us to buy the building then. So that was a little heartbreaking. Uh, we were grieving the loss of Russ's mom. And then in a sense, we were also grieving the loss of the building uh, just because it was just such a, it just felt right. It just Mel felt wouldn't drive through Slater for that whole, there was like a six month period there where she did not want to I come to not. town. No. And what year, no. what year was this? Was it? 2018. Okay. So this would have been like September, October of 18. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, in my, in my devastation, you know, would be like just to as many people as I could share with, uh, if you ever hear of them wanting to sell, you know, just please let us know. And um, so within about six months, I guess, it would have been July of 2019, I get an email from the realtor of the new homeowners um, and just giving us the heads up that 421 Maine is about to hit the market in 30 days. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> we, can't, we can't let it hit the market. So I let Russ know and, you know, we're just like, okay, let's go in with a, we were a little bit better, you know, in a bit, a little bit better of a situation. We were more prepared. We could prepare our home to sell quickly. Um, so yes, we ended up buying it without it hitting the market um, when it went kind of for sale again. And so, um, and that happened all within the same year, which was really a miracle. Like, I don't know. It was it was kind of like we needed to let it go yeah first um for it to come back for it to come back almost well, yeah and do you know i'm so curious on that first person um 
did they plan and intend to use the commercial space and then it just like fell they, through became more expensive than they thought it was going to be et cetera, they et had they had a, they i think they intended to rent it because they had a big for rent sign downstairs yeah and they called us and attempted to rent it to us but um we want we didn't we weren't interested in renting it we wanted to live if we were going to be here we wanted to we wanted the whole thing yeah. we wanted to live upstairs and to and to so we didn't rent it and yeah. and nobody else did either no it's that. actually i was hesitant i didn't like to come i just i would look because i was in slater with some regularity working and cleaning and stuff and i would always drive down and look carefully because i was hoping that i would see that for rent sign just still sitting there because i just yeah. didn't I really didn't want them to find a great renter that was going to spend the fortune to be here because they maybe they'd still be here if they did, but well, and it just sat empty for six months. Mm -hmm. Very likely they would have, you know, if they yeah. had found the proper yes. cash flow, shall we say. Like, at, the, um, at the rental price that they were asking, it would have paid the mortgage. It would have paid the mortgage on the whole building. And I, I said, I, I just, I couldn't. I couldn't sleep at night knowing that I was paying their mortgage just to be in the bottom part. I loved the building, but not like that. No, well, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't necessarily make financial sense from a business perspective either. And especially a carpet cleaning. We didn't need really, all, we loved this, but I didn't really need my carpet van for a while. I did, I backed it in here and I just enjoyed, we enjoyed the space. We had the friends over <laughs> and I would just, the, the, yeah, the van, I just park it right here and uh, it was mm -hmm. cool. Um, mm -hmm. But. It's such a cool space. I think that we felt like it needed to be, it, it's the center of town, it always has been. It's the nicest building in town and it has the potential to be the anchor. so special. Yeah, so special. It is, mm -hmm. yes, of the town, it is, it is. It's in, it's in the, it's the nicest building in the best location and it's, it's our, I think it's, it's our, it's an opportunity and, and almost a responsibility, I think, mm -hmm. to, properly care for it and to like I said before I think eventually we have we have a 13 year old so we have to have lots of time for him and just for raising the family but um as years go by we hope I hope that we will sort of surrender more and more of the public house to the town we started with the coffee shop but we have all these amazing dreams of what could happen here and have already started. I mean, we, there was a small wedding here and there was, it's just that we love, we love it. We love the, we love the whole idea. We love the history of the building. We love being, having this opportunity. How many opportunities do you get to be, to sort of shape a town even a little bit in, in the direction that um, so many people are so excited about that we've done, we've done this. It doesn't make sense in a lot of ways that all of a sudden Main Street Slater has a, a legitimately sort of swanky, you know, thing that wasn't um, wasn't there before. So hopefully we're hoping to inspire some others to put together something special on Main Street and Slater that might be cool enough that would cause you to come from maybe Ames or Ankeny or Polk City or mm -hmm. and we have found so much of that um, that that they just they love it enough that they would come to Little Slater and see what what's going on around here. Yeah. Yeah. To build off of the momentum that you guys are building. Yes. The space. Yes. I oh, love it. I really like that. So I want to go back to you a little bit now. What did you do coming out of Jefferson High School? You said you were working in Carroll. What were you doing? Yeah. I worked at um, American Home Shield for six years mm -hmm. as a sales rep. And, um, you know, that actually trained me for what I stepped into with the clean machine was we just got going to say, how was that sales yes. role and everything else? Yeah. Did so you enjoy it? I did. I loved it. It was a, it was a cubicle job. So I mean, you know, like oh, my favorite show is the office. I can totally relate to that in that environment, just having everybody there. And yeah, so it was very much like the office. Um, but you know, I fielded calls. So people would call me and I would talk, you know, the customer service, um, I would, I was trained in sales. Um, it just, it was a, it made it very easy to transition into, in fact, I took a lot of like the method and the model and the, even the, the note, how I take notes, um, what came from that six year period. It just really prepared me to step right on in and be able to field calls as they're coming in and set up the schedule. And yeah, it was, it just, it was very natural. So I was really thankful for that little season that um, set me up to really 
because you didn't have a scheduler before, you know, we got married. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked really well um, to do that. Yeah. And, and that's, I'm, that's, I love that. I love talking to people. I love, um, yeah, just having that personal interaction with customers. It's, it's a good fit. Yeah. So then you also mentioned that you were in school at one point there as well. What? I didn't go to school okay. oh, in Jefferson. Yeah. I graduated. Yeah, high school. No, no, no. But then you said, didn't you say you were in school while you were? No, I moved to Italy. Yeah. For okay. two years. Yeah, tell me about that. Oh. That's super random, but I love it. It's somebody random. Who went to international as well. Yeah, so I was a young single mom, um, you know, ventured off, went out of state, um, you know, launched and, and then came back um, to be close to family had my baby and you know just had a couple six months you know of being a new mom and really you know, I was young enough I was 21 um, figuring out what do I want to do in life you know and I knew that I had this opportunity arise I went to Bible school um, in Italy and just north of Rome in a town called Ladispoli Italy and so I, I just was ambitious enough and crazy enough in my young years that I just sold my car and sold everything and bought a plane ticket and moved me and my little six month old baby to Italy um, for two years. And we lived there. Um, and I had this little studio apartment the first year. I was a student in the, in the it was a, it wasn't like accredited school, but it was a Bible school, like a mission missionary kind of thing, the mother, I don't know what you would even call that. The mother hub of that branch was in like Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, Super random. Yeah, so I mean, I knew Americans. There were Americans there. And actually the, the, the pastors of the church were the son and daughter of the, my pastors in the church that I went to in Jefferson. So I had the connection. Um, it was just a good opportunity for me to kind of just launch as an adult and as a mom and to um, just go head first into independence and learn who I am and what what I want for my life and but in a safe way you know that I that I still kind of knew English speaking people you know yeah but yeah that was gonna be my next question do you speak Italian uh poco poco okay not a lot I don't dream in <laughs> Italian so I don't truly speak the language but you lose it I haven't spoke I could get my point across yes yeah. um Oh, it's exhausting to learn a language. <laughs> so I, I've been doing Duolingo. I'm like on a 400 and something day streak. And I also took Spanish four years in high school and one year in college and still have none of it. So Yeah, you have to really be submerged, immersed, immersed and just like sink or swim. You got to get your point across. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like one of my dearest friends over there didn't speak English. So we would sit down and we would have these dinners and she had a baby about the same about the same age as mine, and so we'd get we'd get our little translating books out, and like if we'd really get stumped, we'd just like show each other like what we're trying to say. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it's exhausting um, mentally. You know, I remember going to bed just like wiped because all of the thinking and trying to communicate and be understood, um, it was mentally exhausting. Oh, I could totally see that. I could totally see. I loved Italy though. It was just, you know, it wasn't the, it wasn't glamorous by any means, you know, like I had no car. I just pushed the little stroller to the, to the little GS grocery store. And yeah, it was, but it was great. Like I, I think I came, became more appreciative of, I don't know, just the modern day conveniences that we have here. Truly like right. first world problems are a real thing. <laughs> we have, we have a lot of conveniences here. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. So then... Russ, tell me your story. Are you Montana born and bred then, or you just happen to be in Montana? I was born and raised in western New York, outside okay. of Rochester. So random then. Okay. Sure, yes. Tell me more. Um, I grew up in outside of Rochester in a town called Farmington, a small town. Actually much more like the Midwest than what most people realize when I say I'm from New York, they think skyscrapers. and. I'm not from the skyscrapers of New York. I'm from the rolling hills and the Finger Lakes region of Western New York. It's beautiful out there, very green, huge trees, very rainy and gray, but that kind of provides a really, I mean, the flowers and the, it's very green and beautiful. And it's very farm country. 
It is. It is right? highly yeah, so agricultural. Yes. Farms, tons um, of dairy. That's why I feel like a lot of people like you said associate New York. Yeah. New York City is the only thing going, but it's like not. That. It's just that <laughs> little corner. Right. And yeah. the rest of it is very yep. not. Yep. So okay. So um, and my we lived close enough to Rochester, New York, that my family would kind of, my dad would take our family up to the Adirondack Mountains and stuff because we were. I grew up in. I mean. It was a huge subdivision outside of Rochester, New York, kind of like maybe like an Urbandale or something like that. It's sort of a larger, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but um, Western New York, two brothers, mom and dad. I went to uh, college in New York, kind of did the tour day. Where did you go? Um, I started at Monroe Community College. Okay. And then I went to uh, the State University of New York at Oswego. Um, New York is different from Iowa in that Iowa has one state college that's huge and yes. it's right in the middle and mm -hmm. everybody comes to it. New York State is is very different. It has actually many small state universities peppered throughout the state. Um, most of them six to eight thousand students that go there. Yeah. Um, so I went to Oswego and um, I went to Brockport and when I say tour day, so I went to four different colleges. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just, I had heard growing up that if I were to go and get my college education, that you know, things would be okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I had to do that yes. in order for things to be okay. So I, I thought that was the case and I did that. And, um, and I got my associate's degree from Tompkins Cortland Community College. Okay. Um, and I lived in Cortland, New York. There's also a where state university. It's in the middle of New York okay. State. It was a couple hours from where I grew up. Um, so it was far enough away from home that I definitely felt like I was away from home, but it was close enough that I was still sort of, you know, I was two hours from home. Yeah. And uh, so I did that, did a lot of partying. I had some fun in college. So you had the real college experience. A little bit, of, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of studying here and there. I did make it out with the degree, but, um. And did it have a focus on anything in particular? I did, well, <laughs> I had many focuses. <laughs> Other than partying? Yes. Um, well, it started with English. I thought I wanted to be an English teacher. Okay. Um, and then, um, phys ed, teaching. Most of it was toward I couldn't imagine not having summers off, so I thought I should be a teacher, right? And anyway, I got down I'd the like road. I'd like to know the percentage of how many people enter that with just the the desire yeah, to have just, summers off. Well, I can tell you with a husband who used to be a former educator, uh, that's where when it's not landscaping season, about the end of December until January or February, he's like, I'm on summer vacation. Mm -hmm. so, like, I'm yeah first quarter is now the new summer vacation yes yeah. i don't think that he was necessarily going into the teaching thing with that thought in mind but yeah. i wouldn't say that it was not in his top three so. sure mm -hmm. yeah i believe it mm -hmm. i was bent on finding just just not anyway going i went to college for a long time too i should have i should be like a doctor of many things at this point not exactly but uh but anyway i did i jumped around i didn't know what i was what i was doing we, um, we grew up downhill skiing, my brothers and I, and I ended up sort of through my 20s after I had got my, got my associate's degree. Actually, I had already lived in Colorado once when I was 19. We moved out there to ski for a season and then I ended up going back to college and stuff. But we would go back um, and I chased skiing. Um, it's a, kind of a long... Uh, you ended I, up in Colorado. I did. I ended up in Colorado working for a, a small business. Um, couple of great guys from Long Island, New York, of all places. They were from a completely different New York than yeah, I was, oh, but we were, different. you know, um, and, but they were really good guys. They, they were good to me and, um, gave me the opportunity to be there in kind of resort town, Colorado. It's an expensive place to live and it's not always easy to, what, to just do it. What resort town were you in? Um, I, I was working out of Dillon. Okay. Um, it's Summit County. Mm -hmm. and Is I, that close to you? Breckenridge okay. um, and Frisco was the town that I lived in Frisco. Mm -hmm. I lived in Silverthorne for a minute too. All those little towns are in Summit County. Summit County is home to Breckenridge, Keystone, Arapaho Basin. Um, it's just over the pass from Vail. Vail is 30, 35 minutes from Summit County. 
Um, so it's right in the middle of it's if you know if you want to go skiing you should go there or Utah or something like that it's that was what we we were there for Ryan and I moved out there and um, chased skiing um, I ended up met, meeting a gentleman uh, I worked for him his name is Charles and, um, and he showed an interest in the work I was doing as I was working for this company in Silverthorne and, um, and what were you doing working for that company? Were you carpet cleaning? Oh, I didn't even mention that. There you go. Yes. Okay, so I was, this is where you learned. Yes. Um, and uh, so I met Charles, and he showed an interest in what I was doing, and asked a bunch of questions. He's real inquisitive, and anyway, he um, I was a carpet cleaner in his um, second home. He was from Western Montana. Actually, he was originally from England. He spoke with this really heavy English accent. And he was talking about business with me and asking business questions. And I just had a lot of excuses. You know, he said, well, why don't you do this on your own? And why don't you, couldn't you do this? You know, or, and, and I just, I didn't have enough money or I didn't have enough whatever. I had a lot of reasons why I couldn't do it at that point. Well, and, and did, um, you, did you grow up in a household that was entrepreneurial at all or like no. you were a standard suburb kid of like very standard white my dad worked for the post office and my mom was a medical transcriptionist okay so, so she typed and was a kind of secretarial in a way so you at, at no point had been exposed to the entrepreneurial no thing. other than i should say my aunt and uncle mm -hmm. were very entrepreneurial okay. and we were close with with their family so i was sort of exposed to my uncle was a he was a school teacher for like his solid job but they also he put on firework shows they had a novelty shop this is way up in northern new york where it's this far from the border it's canada they, they talk like canadians it's it's awesome so i used to play um i played basketball in college at st joe's in philly so uh we went to oleon okay st. bonaventure okay there by buffalo ish basically canada as well Cool. Uh, college. Yeah. So familiar. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. They were into all sorts of stuff, and I still get a kick out of that. They. They, they had a bar. They did have a bar. They had a bar in Malone, New York. Malone's mm -hmm. right on the right on the border. No, the bar was in Messina. Messina is also on the border. It's where my mom's family's from. It yeah. is up on the in New York, but the border of Canada. It's very rural up mm -hmm. there. It's way more rural up there than it is here, mm -hmm. for sure, by far way less populated, way more rural, way more, even more side-by-sides and uh, motorcycles and what, it's all of that. It, it's it's way more rural up there, but, um, so anyway, I That's guess. That's Charles. Charles, yes, Charles was a, was a businessman asking me a bunch of those questions, and he ended up calling me about six months later, Charles, because he had found a carpet cleaning van up in Bozeman, Montana for sale, a gentleman was in his 70s and looking to get out of the business and um, and but it sounded like a good truck and the price was right I didn't have much cash at all but the opportunity was there I called my aunt and I said you know is there any way that um, I, you have a few that was four thousand dollars and I was like no way can I let four thousand dollars get in the way of me and I'd been cleaning carpet for several years and had been dreaming kind of of doing it on my own and finally there's this van and it's up in Bozeman and I know there's mountains up there and I just, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give that a shot. So my dog and I, we jumped in the Subaru and, uh, and we went to Bozeman, Montana and I bought the van and uh, whew, that was hard. I didn't know anybody other than Charles and I still, like we weren't buddies or he was just like a guy who helped me, he's an awesome guy, but um, I didn't really have any I didn't have a lot of connection. It was hard. It was You're tough. Just completely starting from scratch yes. in every sense of the world. Yes, and in in um in western Montana, winters can be very brutal. Um, you know, sometimes negative thirty would set in, and it would stay for a week or two, and like real time. It was tough. I didn't right. have. I didn't even have a garage for my van. It was like it was an insulated van, <laughs> and I would put a heater in there, and I can't. I still can't believe I did that. That was crazy that I did that. Yeah, uh, but I'm glad I did that because um, we ended up being introduced um, an older couple that I went to church with um, and was friends with Mel's mom um, 
they, Mel's mom and Debbie, mm -hmm. basically, got together and they both thought it would be a great idea that, that we should we should meet one another when, when Mel comes to visit for Thanksgiving. So Had she, I known, it, it, I never would have gone. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying because of you, but I was not, like, I was not looking. This not was searching. just, this was just something that, yeah, if I knew that they were plotting, I would have been upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad that they did. Yeah. Our first date was, was very good. It was a good first date. Yeah. Made me a little nervous there. For a <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, oh, if I would have oh, known, I'm I so never would have gone. No, it's not like that. It comes out. There's no filter. I'm a verbal it's... processor, so sorry. <laughs> and this isn't going to be edited either, so awesome. <laughs> the time is perfect. Welcome to married life. Yeah, right? As <laughs> I'm three months or not even... Two months into my marriage, I'm basically a marriage expert at this point. Um, okay, so then you're in, are you in still in Bozeman area, I take it? Mm -hmm. I live just outside of Bozeman. Yeah. Ready to it becoming Los Angeles for a Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, and, it, and it was starting back then, too. Things were kind of expensive. It was a, it was a nice place to live, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh, when you're, this is your first foray into business. Mm -hmm. on your own kind of situation. clean machine was yes that's yep. what i was going to say so yep. what did you name it how did you come up with the name how did you you knew no one you mm -hmm. had you were from ground zero. you don't even have friends and family to right. like recommend you for right. sort of a situation mm -hmm. so how did you go about that when you started it up how'd you come up with a name it's hard to even recall um i had been seriously for dr years dr in my i'm an in my head kind of person i do a lot of thinking i have a lot of time when i'm actually physically cleaning the hours go by and and anyway I had lots of opportunity to dream and to think and I I don't really remember what exactly I had this idea that I wanted it to be like I loved the mystery machine and Scooby-Doo when I was a kid so I had this idea that it would be really cool to have a carpet cleaning van that was like the mystery machine yeah. and like could maybe sort of capture that vibe a little bit Cause I just grew up on Scooby-Doo. I just love it. I still love it. But, uh, um, so your van was yellow. The van, it, was, it was just yellow. Let's it came please yellow. Please note that this van was 80, what was it? 1983? Something like that. It was old. <laughs> Ugly yellow. Beautiful shape though. This, it was awesome. Not a rest spot, but yellow. So, so when he lettered it up with red, I mean, that was kind of It ended up too. being cyclone colors. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that, that, that worked out. I didn't know I was doing that, but it totally was. But he put these you know, you, it looked like the mystery machine, kind of, like. These soap bubbles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, that was, yeah. we, we probably still have old cards, yellow and red, the clean machine cards from Bozeman. Yeah, I've just always been kind of attracted to, and I think that's a, a, that was the beginning of sort of what we, and Mel does too, we have found, we're similar that way, that we, we love. Um, Designing a brand. Well, yes, totally, but also, um, a brand that is maybe like that includes what is the word that I'm looking for that is like vague enough. Oh, you mean like no, no, no not diverse, vague. like diverse. like okay. like old and new, mm, yeah, smashing together mm -hmm. in the most beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, like it's the blending of modern but leaving character. Is the yes, way that I would describe yes, because we're embracing nostalgia. Like, yes, yeah, we are both pretty nostalgic. We love old music and old, I'm you know. But I can pick up with that just in the space that we're in. Like, awesome. I think you did a very, that, again, come as someone who can relate and went through the whole process, like that it takes a certain amount of thought and curation and vision. Mm -hmm. To keep uh, it. To keep it. Yeah. Because you do, at the end of the day, need to have the modern conveniences, mm -hmm. or in your case in the business, like it needs to be functional, it needs to be effective, it needs to be all the things that someone would expect and want to hire. Yep. Mm -hmm but be able to bring that character, because I think it's the character and the brand that hooks people mm -hmm. and keeps them coming back. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's the customer service, it's the interactions, it's the vibe you create. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's um, it's essentially the personality, right? It's almost yeah. like you're mm -hmm. creating a, a, a personality. Mm -hmm. you're, you're sending a personality out into the world, hoping that people will like it mm -hmm. and, and will- Relate you know, to it. Yeah, and will kind of, Call your in in the clean machine case. Call your in the coffee shop. Come come, come here, here, you yeah. know, and, and try to be near us, you know. So do you remember your first paying customer? 
in Bozeman? Oh, and I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. But they definitely were in Bozeman. Um, I don't remember who it would have been. I do know that, that so, it was tough going. Um, my landlord that I rented from ended up hiring me some to do their, her, they had a fair amount of, she was, they were not a huge property manager, but they had some to kind of get me going. I had a truck stop that I would clean monthly. And that was like my big, I would pay my rent basically, but I was clean. It was hard. And oh, when man. you're cleaning them though, the, yep. what are you cleaning? What are you doing? How often? Like what's the cadence? Mm -hmm. Like all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Back then it was, well with this truck stop, it was a monthly thing and it was, I don't hardly ever do anything like that anymore. But, um, but it was, it was a monthly thing and with customers, you know, you'd hear from them maybe yearly or maybe in a more active home, maybe more often and maybe less often if it's, you know, if it's someone that's just less traffic in the home or whatever. Um, I had worked for some larger, uh, a larger franchise carpet cleaning while I was in college. And, um, and I didn't want to, I didn't want customers. I didn't like, I felt like, I didn't want customers to feel like I sold them everything in the truck just to make a few extra bucks. And just working for this large franchise, it kind of, I didn't like it. I didn't like that part of it, but I really did like the, the whole process. And I, I always loved providing service for people. I actually think that service is like the path to happiness for me anyway. Yeah. When I'm serving people or, or it just gives me truly, it, it, it's gratification when I'm, able to kind of fix a, a challenge that a customer asks me to do whether it's a tile floor or carpet or whatever i'm cleaning it's um anyway that's, well, i enjoy that and yours it's a almost an immediate gratification mm -hmm. sort of a situation because mm -hmm. like you have dirty carpet yeah. and then you yeah. know 30 minutes later you can yeah. visibly see the yeah. results already of what you did mm -hmm. which that's nice like that's one of those things that not every industry is that way sure um and so that is very cool. So what kind of equipment did you require at the beginning? Did this all come in this bright yellow van or? It did. Uh, the only okay. thing, the bright, yes, the bright yellow so van, $4, it, was, yes, it was, it, it needed a heater and that was it. But it was an older guy that took impeccable care of this thing. I mean, it was beautiful. Seriously. It was an old, it was like 20 years old when I bought it. There wasn't a speck of rust on it. It was clean on the inside. He was so proud of it when he was showing me it needed a heater. Um, on the inside. And that was older equipment than what I'm running now. It had its own propane heater um, that I had to, that was the one thing that it needed a new one when he was selling it. So I did have to invest a little bit to get that truck going. Um, but all told, it was an amazing Perfect. deal on what I what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I, I had to jump at it. It was like an opportunity that I, I wouldn't have forgiven myself for not you know, they were trying, you know, you got to try. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then you start this business, you get your first customers, you're off and running. How many years until you guys were conspired mm. and aligned? I was in Montana for three years. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we had met, I guess, two and a half years into my, my journey in Montana. And then that was a very quick courtship. Was. Four months and you're married. Very quick. Yep. We, it was a few days before Thanksgiving <laughs> yep. that we went on our date. Our date. Mm -hmm. They, the Debbies, Mel's mom and my friend, mm -hmm. and Mel, Mel's mom's friend, Debbie, mm -hmm. um, they set us up, right? Well, yeah. yeah. Um, they bought, they ended up buying a, uh, it was like high school. Seriously. It was like, it was like, I high thought school. he was, they were like, years cause we, Montana. cause we went and had this card oh night. They, they sort of put us in the same space and we play cards and whatever. And we, it was great. I mean, it was great, but nothing came of it, obviously. I mean, there's 20 people, 30 people in the house probably playing cards and we just, I kind of liked when I was putting my shoes on when I left. I did. I was like, oh, I was like, maybe. I thought he was 18 years old though. <laughs> he, Literally is aging better than me. It's not fair at all. He's older than I am for the record. But I thought he was like way younger than me. And I was 27 at the time. And uh, I get a phone call from, my mom gets a phone call when we go home from this evening. And it's the other Debbie uh, asking my mom, hey, if says, hey, if Russ asks Mel out, will she go out with him? <laughs> Just and like I'm, sixth grade. I'm sitting there with my grandma. You know, it's like 10.30 at night. We're home now. And 
And I, circle, my first yes. question is... Do you, do you like Rock? Please, please write Circle back. one, that's right. <laughs> my first question is, how old is he? Because I, I it was like confirmed, but it wasn't him. He had nothing to do with it. It was the Debbie's. Um, and so then my mom's like, I don't know, I think he's 30. So he was, he was older than And then my grandma's like, oh, go on the date. If you don't like him, you never have to see him again. And you know? she was right. And though, she was too. right, she was right. And so I guess, you know, I had all the childcare lined up and we went on our date. They bought a gift certificate for us for our uh, Johnny Carino. Johnny Carino. Shout out to Johnny Carino. That was awesome. That was They're a good no date. longer in. That was a good date. <laughs> it's though. something else now, but. Um, it was. I mean, our conversation, like we sat in the it parking was, lot just talking it was before we even cold went in that night. It was freezing. It was like 35 below or something like that without yeah. the wind chill. Yeah. It was just bitter cold. Mel left her coat at home yeah, in Mel Iowa. Yeah, Mel had like a jean jacket. You oh. know, this yeah. is not this prepared. Is what we do. Not prepared. Uh, but Russ showed up with hot chocolate. So what a move. I mean, that was like such a good impression. I was like, that is so thoughtful. No flowers, just hot chocolate. Not, that was that was a good move. So hot chocolate, all you single gals. Uh, yeah, we went guys. to Johnny Carino's and we played pool and then we went. And my brother came on yeah. our first day. Like he was, he showed up at some point and it was just, it was just great conversation. And I'm an overshare. I pretty much am a verbal processor. And so I just put it all out there and I'm like, you know what? If I scare this guy off, I don't care <laughs> kind of thing. So I, we were just frank. With each other and yeah we i left i mean we then the next day was thanksgiving and we came you came over and played cards with my family and you know i went home the next day after that and uh then we just talked on the phone when it was 500 dollars a month to pay for a cell phone it was Remember it was that? weird it was back when yeah minutes and stuff like right. back in 07 mm -hmm. yeah so like 500 dollars a month for our phone it was crazy bills. <laughs> we did that for one month and then i drove it was christmas it was just a month later um and i proposed mm -hmm. and um we didn't even know at that point we didn't even know exactly where we were going to end up you know we just knew that we wanted to be together and uh you know we i ended up moving um to so iowa you so you moved to iowa right away so but yes. you mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. moved to montana no nope. nope. but we spent a couple horrible. months we spent a couple months you know just after I had proposed to her, I, we really weren't sure. Mm -hmm. And we talked on the phone a whole lot. And mm -hmm. yes, I ended up selling um, the carpet cleaning business. So to, tell me a little bit about that though. Like what was that process like of going through? Hopefully you got more than $4,000 for it. Oh, yes. I did, okay. I did. And I'm, and I'm so thankful. It was, it ended up being one of my friends, actually the dad, one of the Debbie's daddies. Debbie's husband. Debbie's husband, <laughs> who is a painter. <laughs> and um, he has since sold the business as well. It's still running in, in Bozeman. Uh, today, but it that process was actually I mean, I remember being extremely panicked and not knowing what we were gonna do but um, but it was did it ever cross your mind to drive the yellow banana van to Iowa? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Decided no because I don't remember honestly. I think he was interested Yes, in I think so. And just one... and because and I did I had a there was some business built up um, and some accounts, some regular work that was coming in. And I think that must have been it because, yes, I sold the business and moved here and had no, I didn't have equipment when I moved here. Well, and so was your intention when you moved here to essentially continue? Completely. Oh, started all Completely, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I took that money and we bought a van. Yeah. And immediately, it was a, more than $4,000. Yes, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so, quite a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Yes, and we were in Jefferson, where Mel grew up, mm -hmm. when when we did that. So that would have been two thousand and eight, and then, yeah. like I said, we we did that for a little bit. Um, I worked still until I had our our son um, in two thousand ten, and then you worked even part time at DMAC. I was full time at DMAC. Oh, full time at DMAC. Oh yeah. Part time at Clean Machine. What were you Excuse doing full time at DMAC? I was their lead custodian. Okay. At Third urban. shift, the urban campus. Mm -hmm. So I was commuting 67 miles each way to work third shift, and I was over a crew of like eight people, and um, I was I was a part of the crew. I, we cleaned the college, the urban campus. Yeah. I rather enjoyed that, honestly. That was um, I didn't like the hours at all, and the benefits were fantastic. But um, 
but that was that was okay. It was just it was a lot of driving in two thousand eight. It was yeah, and, and the the gas was crazy high, and it was it was it was a it was a. I I knew that that was not really what I wanted to do forever, but it was a path to keep the clean machine dream alive because it was third shift. That meant I could take any potential jobs that came in for the clean machine and try to do that. Um, that was a real struggle, trying to do both, mm -hmm. trying to have a full-time job and also get a brand new carpet cleaning business off the ground in a rural town in Iowa that's isolated. That was tough. So when we moved to Huxley, he was, we were closer then for, to DMAC for the, the lesser of the commute, yeah. but at one that point, so good. once we got closer to the, you know, to the city, our carpet cleaning business, of course, picked up. Everything started to pick up. So yeah. then we had a choice to make. What do we do? Do we, you know, do we take the jump and go full time, you know, with just being completely dependent on the clean machine? That was a scary leap. It was a very scary leap. Of course. Yeah. And you have not necessarily a newborn at that point. He was little. One. Yeah, yeah. he was little. You know, yeah. you're, you, you have two kids. And I'm not working. I'm staying home. Right. Just e ready to answer We calls. had just bought a home. Yep. And you were leaving benefits. Yep. And you were, you yep. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely have empathy for that uh, person that's brought to the crossroads of, you know, do I go full in? Do I just risk it? Or, you know, do we stay? And we, we received lots of advice, you know, from people in, in, in my family that were... Well, we went looking for it. We were trying to be smart. Yeah. I mean, we did. We, we went looking for solid advice. I didn't know what to do. I, well, we were taking it very seriously. We were very thoughtful about mm -hmm. all of it. And um, we wanted to... Ultimately, I wanted... I wanted the clean machine to, to succeed mm -hmm. to, to I wanted to see it flourish you know my dream you know was not was not to be forever cleaning classrooms at a community college in Des Moines but but to rather it is so satisfying it has been to us to um, to build a small business um, in so many ways it's difficult but it's very it's very satisfying to to build things you know that are that are cool and interesting and unique and you know, mm -hmm. I mean that's what I think to me that's that's the best thing about that's what made America special and strong was the independent spirit of the average American you know who, who had a dream mm -hmm. and was going for it um, and they I mean over our history as a country think of the coolest the coolest businesses have arisen and they still exist sometimes. I mean, our favorite thing to do is to go down, you know, uh, of old Main Street or something like. In, have you ever been to Galena, yes. Galena, Illinois? Like, yep. and, and just see that the, the passions and dreams of people kind of kind of sprouting up out of all these little shops and whatever. I think that is so cool and so much what keeps us safe even and secure knowing that we are not dependent on a large community college to pay my bills but we're dependent on you know our own ingenuity and creativity and hard work and um you community. know and yeah and definitely in our community sure mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah it's been it's been a fun journey we've learned so much i feel like that the, the I've kind of become, I've grown up in this process. I've learned so much about uh, what what makes things succeed, sort of. And what makes, even what makes me happy. I wasn't really sure, but I realized through the process, you know, I always liked carpet cleaning. I really did. I liked the process and the whole thing. It was kind of, um, it was hard work in the beginning. But, um, but anyway, I liked that part, but I grew to love the part of like the branding part, like, growing a brand is like really cool and fun and interesting mm -hmm. to me and we had a lot of fun and still continue to have fun with the, the clean machine and and with the public house mm -hmm. doing that again but with a completely it has a very different personality from the clean machine mm -hmm. and i think that's so cool both of them are really cool and i'm proud of both um as you should be and oh, thousand thank you. percent as you should be thank like you it's one of those things um, as a 
material on it. Nor at this point too, building something from scratch is mm -hmm. not easy. No. It's not linear. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, uh, it's not for everyone either. Sure. Right? You know, that's one thing that I do try to reiterate to people is that like, if entrepreneurship is not your thing, that's okay. Totally you okay. Know, at the end yep. of the day, entrepreneurs, if we want to build something really big, we need people to come work for us. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly fine. Yep. You know, a lot of those businesses that you talked about that have been built in this country over the years, like they wouldn't be possible if you didn't have people to come work for you yes. and, and fit those roles kind of thing. Yep. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, what you've done and what you've produced is very cool and very different brands, you know, very different messages, very different clientele. There's some crossover for sure. But yeah. you know, the communication of that and just the whole process of all of it, you should be very proud of the mm -hmm. way you guys have done it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you um, so much. But so I want to talk about the space that we're in right now. Yeah. Public House 421. Mm -hmm. So you guys buy this building in 2019 after watching it go to someone else yes. and sit for six months. Mm -hmm. So then you come around it again and end up purchasing it in 2019. What are the first steps? Very you... end of 2019. Right before it was. <laughs> before COVID. Yeah. It was um, weird. I mean, for you know, I mean, the world went really <laughs> weird there for a minute. But uh, but yes, it was right before COVID. For a cleaning service, though, possibly a very. It was fine. Kind of oh, yeah. Thing. Yeah. There was an initial short little hiccup where everybody, including myself, was a little bit nervous and scared. But minus that month, I guess, of hiccup. It was it was good. Yeah. Or it was good for cleaning. There were so many people that brought us their area rugs to be cleaned here. Right. And yeah, they did. They started to come bring, and bring them. We could like, wow, just set yeah, them up in this big open space that's now our residence dining room in here. But yeah, we would just clean area rugs all day. We really hardly didn't have to travel far or, or do much, you know, uh, in other people's homes. And then and then you know people started having us back in into the home. But yeah, the cleaning industry was. Well, okay. One, as I say, was probably it was okay. A, a pretty decent one to be in mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you guys moved in right away upstairs, though, because yeah. you had sold your house already. We were talking about that a little bit off camera in terms of the timing. Why did yeah. that happen to stay? There was a slight gap there. <laughs> yeah. Three weeks or no, it almost was four. a month. It was a four. We went to Colorado for one of those for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then, yeah, we were up at the um, extended stay in Ames. Mel tells people weeks. that we were homeless for a month. Because it's very dramatic. We weren't I mean, actually homeless. I think, uh, you know, we we were having continental breakfast every morning. You know what I mean? So yeah. we, were, we were that kind of homeless. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it was not terrible. We weren't living out of our car or no. anything like that. Yeah. Okay, so you move in upstairs, had the um, idea of this coffee shop, and I, I would really call it the third space more than a specific like coffee shop sort mm -hmm. of a thing. I don't know if you guys think of it that way, but... I would agree. We have a hard time really kind of... Pinpointing I, what it is. Totally, because I think the magic of what it is, then that's why we call it a public house. We wanted to leave the door wide open for... This is where community happens. Mm -hmm. It happens around coffee sometimes, you know, and at yeah. night sometimes around a, an event or drinks or whatever. But we we wanted we wanted community, especially coming off of COVID. Yeah, we felt personally we felt a, a yearning for that and a desire, mm -hmm. and we knew that that we had a lot of friends and our customers had shared with me that they, you know, I was very there was just this weird time, you know, where people were weird around one another and. Um, I could sense that people really wanted to have community, like real actual community. And I knew that we were sitting on the neatest space, at least in, in the town, if not probably our whole community. Maybe. I would, I would almost say it's just that special to us. We think it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty, pretty cool. You know, it's big and it's a good place to have community. But we had no idea we were going to do a coffee shop when we moved in. No, okay. none. That's at what all. I was going to there say, was no zero. Mm -hmm. That was not even on the no, radar. No, no. not and at you all. You were just excited that you could bring area rugs in here and yes. weren't working yeah. outside mm -hmm. necessarily. In oh, there. we were pumped about having like the neatest building for our carpet cleaning business. Like, you know, but it was even more than we needed for our carpet and cleaning And entertaining. Business. Like we do, we have, you know, we like to entertain. We like to have friends over. And we built, the first thing we did was build a bar in the front just for our own entertainment. We, we meant it to be a bar slash reception desk. So Mel could sit down here and 
I don't know what we were thinking, like people were gonna come in and schedule a no. carpet cleaning job. Mel or... sits at the kitchen table. Right. <laughs> she does it. She's always worked from her laptop at the kitchen yeah. table. It seemed like a good idea. It did. It did. And we used the bar so. Yeah, you know, sure. there was good use. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we were connected with, you know, then a local guy who became, the family became very good friends of ours and he's a woodworker. And so, I mean, when we were building public house, you know, then we had him to come in and do our cabinetry stuff. And um, so we were connect, you know, we were starting to connect with local makers that could, you know, do their thing. And starting to kind of fall in love with the town. We started to meet some of these, yeah. some of these people, uh, older people, younger people. It's a very diverse little town. Yeah. Right. And we really liked that. I still like that. I call it Mayberry because everybody rides around on their golf carts. Yeah. <laughs> that is the hallmark of Slater. That's what my mom says about Collins because everybody rides around on it's their golf carts. There's this one old guy that carries his little dog around with him. I was like, freaking, you live in Mayberry. Like, it's yeah. Mayberry. It's Mayberry. It's so, like, it's so like so a perfect cool. little beach town without the beach. It's yeah. like everybody, it's like a vacation town. Everybody's on their golf carts just riding around, going to the post office, going to Larry's. Yeah, it's 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 just easy here. Larry's is here. the grocery store it's, right down here. It's friendly here. Yeah, it's Larry's is the grocery store. <laughs> Sorry, Larry's. Um, yeah, it's it's very community. It's a tight knit community. It's yeah. um, people are friendly. People support local businesses here. People embrace. You know, I, mm -hmm. we felt really embraced. And they had been for the cleaning business. Yeah. In in this com in well, we were in Huxley for those nine years, but we knew that Huxley and Ballard had embraced us mm -hmm. as a as a cleaning company, as a carpet cleaning company. And we just, we I, I had a hunch that they probably would, you know, would, would be into this whole thing too. But we didn't know coffee shop. And honestly, like we would come down every morning when he'd be getting the van ready to go out and do carpet cleaning. And we would just be like looking around the space, you know, okay, what are we gonna do, you know, down here? and. He had started recommending coffee shop, coffee shop, and I resisted and resisted. And do you like, are you the coffee head then? Or either of you coffee, like we both big coffee it. people? I love coffee. Okay. Yeah, I, but I had no idea. I, I, like, I don't love it like, I, don't I, didn't, know, like, I, I don't didn't know about, about it. Yeah, I didn't know about it like we do now. No. Uh, but, but and had yeah. either of you worked in like food retail Never. at all? I had been in, in, in college, I worked no. in the bar restaurant business for, some years. So there's at least something yeah, there, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Okay. But so when did, so you downstairs, you're probably enjoying your coffee as he's getting ready to go out on the job or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he starts to press you coffee shop, mm -hmm. coffee shop, and you're mm -hmm. going. No, because yeah. I said, I've never, I don't even go to, I didn't even go to coffee shops. Yeah. Like, and there, and she was intimidated by them. I was intimidated by the menus. What? Oh yeah. Cause I just look at it and she I have no idea what, what the heck's a flat white. I mean, I live in Italy. Your coffee comes in two ounces of espresso and you chug it down and then you go about your day. Like American, American, America has ruined coffee. I mean, true coffee, like espresso. So I, not ruined, but you know what I mean. We've Americanized it. We supersized it. Yeah. So we've made it better. No, not always. But so I just, I just don't go to, I never went to coffee shops. I've never been a barista and you know, I'm old enough where I was like, oh, do I want to do that? Do is that what I really want to do? So I I thought in my in my I thought I was so smart. I said, "Okay, I'll I'll do the coffee shop if you can find a barista school." Well, I didn't think those existed. They do. They exist. And we he found saw one, one. I googled it and saw that there's one in Chicago. Yeah. So the morning that I kind of conceded to his his suggestion of coffee shop, I I'm like, "Fine, but you got to find me a barista school." And so he's like, "Oh, yeah." There's one here in Chicago. I'm going to go clean carpet. Why don't you look this up? You know, uh, give him a call if you have questions, blah, blah, blah. So a couple hours later, you know, it's spring. I'm up on my roof and, uh, and he gets, I get this text from Russ and he's like, you need to talk to, uh, Ashley Bergeson's husband about coffee. I don't know Ashley Bergeson or her husband, Andrew. Oh, I was going to say Jordan or Andrew. Andrew. I grew up playing basketball with Jordan. So did you? Yeah. Cool. 
I didn't put two and two together. I was working for them, Ferguson, and, and, and I was just, you know, you talk to people, yeah. and, and I and I, I had never met Ashley before. Well, we'd never cleaned carpet for her, and he was cleaning her carpet that morning. Yeah. That same morning. It was, it was meant to be. It uh -huh. was, totally. It was like a sign, and so it was like an open door. So we ended up having them over, over, over like the next month, mm -hmm. and just to chat, you know, and to have them in the space, and to just, you know, kind of like, where do we start? And yeah, they have been great mentors and I call them with partners even, you know, like we, they've kind of walked us in, they've given us all the recommendations of like what kind of equipment would be good, um, you know, for our flow of traffic and um, yeah, they roast all of our beans and they deliver every week if I want and it's, they've been awesome. So I would and say. They're, and they're right in West Ames and we have the, the honest desire to support smaller local businesses mm -hmm. because I really do think that that is what that is a hedge against the craziness that is happening around us financially and mm -hmm. in, in so many other ways if we will support one another locally and in our communities yeah. and if we will actually do it at every opportunity that you possibly can yeah. if, you, if you will try your very best I understand that money is tight but even if it costs a little bit more to go with the little guy rather than going on your phone and ordering the thing to get mailed to you, you know, or even anyway. if you can carry one variety. Totally. Um, you know, within your line. Of yes. Whatever you have. Like, mm, yeah. that's still, you can grow from there. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I really liked that about Windmill as well. They're their in family West Ames. business, passionate. They make, I mean, yeah. they're really serious about really good quality coffee. And in our business, both of our businesses, we've always valued quality over quantity. So we'd rather just take on two jobs a day in carpet cleaning life and do a really thorough good job rather than in and out and try to get five of them done under our belt in 20, you know, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We just kind of set the limit at two mm -hmm. and said, you know, you get this time slot and then you get this one. And if this job is as big, then we just do one sometimes if it's a really big job because we'd rather just do it right. Um, and with coffee, same thing. We want to keep our menus not big. We have two options for sizes. Um, you know, our we do have several syrups, so I did kind of go bigger in, in that department than I thought I was going to, but but I think sometimes less is more, truly. And um, at the overwhelm, you know, the options, if they get too many, you get overwhelmed. And that's what I was doing going into a coffee shop. I, I did not know what I would get. Just tell me, well, what do you and, like? And yeah. you wanted people to feel not intimidated, the mm -hmm. opposite of intimidated when yeah. they come in. And that goes with our brand, Public House. And she always says on all her signage, it's, it's welcome home. We want yeah. people to feel very much at home, that they would come in and not be intimidated and afraid to order, um, you know. Or talk about it. Or talk, Let's yeah. talk about yeah. what do you like. We'll you know, figure do you out like? what you like. You yeah, know? yeah. So then talk to me a little bit about that branding piece that you guys said, you know, you really like building brands and all that. Mm -hmm. um, where, did you guys work with someone to like develop mm -hmm. the logos and things like that? Mm -hmm. Or did yeah. you go in, are you, I feel like you guys are, uh, Kind of like me and that like i can see exactly what i want i just need to verbalize it to you and or are you more like big enough? yeah i we are not physically like we don't do art so much like we didn't no. do any of the um we had we logo design people. we had that but we have the vision and we do we do use words a lot to try to inspire somebody to help us to push the brand and actually, I have found that the brand is not this foreign thing that I'm trying to put together, this strange whatever, but it's a part of who we are. And, it, and it's almost like the challenge is not trying to design something that is that will fit. Like the We're not trying to make the next McDonald's that will be like the thing for everybody that's driving by. But I almost feel like if you're able to do something special at a level, you know, to develop a brand that is its own sort of personality and isn't trying to be all things to all people, but is trying to be a very specific thing for very specific people. That's sort of where, who we are. We, we you know, um, every once in a while, we're busy people, so we don't get to take a ton of vacations, but when we do travel, we love 
to receive excellent service. There's no feeling in the world like being treated like a, a king at a restaurant or something. We just love that. And the opposite is true, that we love to do that for somebody. It gets us going to try to, you know, add, you know, life is hard. And if we could add a little bit to, you know, your life, and even if it's a five minute interaction, I love hearing the bursts of joy sometimes when people walk in the door. It's, ah, it's you know, like, like it's a long lost friend that walked in the door or something. It's, it's, that is very much why we're doing this. You know, I, I we never even had any like financial projections or whatever. We knew that we were paying the mortgage for a couple of years before we even opened. And we figured as long as it doesn't like consume a lot of my money that I make, you know, with whatever, let's just have some fun mm -hmm. and let's build what we want to build. Mm -hmm. And let's not dare build something in our home that we don't like. Right. We wanted to build something that we very much like, a place that we very much would like to hang out. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what we're trying to do. But the design of the logos, there's stories there. I mean, like with, like he said, he loves like the mystery machine. So the clean machine, you know, with the bubbles that kind of the soap bubble designs, that kind of gives you the nostalgic reminder of like the mystery machine a little bit, but just modernized. Mr. Machine on Scooby-Doo. On Scooby, Mr. Yeah. Machine on Scooby-Doo. And all then- All rights reserved. All rights reserved. <laughs> and Trademark, Hanna-Barbera, Hanna 1983. Yes. And then with Public House, um, oh, and I would say also with Clean Machine, like it's not just like carpet cleaning. We, we say carpet cleaning and beyond because we offer more services than just carpet cleaning. We, I say if you, we, you can sit or stand on it, we can clean it. So we do BCT, we do upholstery, we do fiber protection, we do area rugs, you know. Tile even, and grout. Tile and grout, showers. I mean, you know, there's a lot that there that we do. So when I use the word vague, like I used earlier and that you weren't thinking of, that I thought you were, I meant broad. 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 Yeah. Not vague, yeah, totally. sorry. That, yeah. But that's what I meant. So I just stand corrected. I just wanted to come back to that and correct that. But then with the, with the public house, um, we wanted to kind of stay true to that where it could be something more than just coffee. Um, so with that, it's more of a hybrid concept business um, because we also kind of wanted to do pub, pubs, pub nights, where it, because public house actually was, pubs were derived from the words of public house. The word pub the comes word. from public house. There you go. He's yeah. a better communicator than I am. Yeah, right, what he said. It's short for pub. public house. Yeah. yeah. And um, I actually, I like, so we were searching for like, what would have been period? Well, Something that would have been period for the building. Well, and we did a little bit of research. We started reading about public houses throughout mm -hmm. history and mm -hmm. their role in, mm -hmm. you know, history. Local community. And, um, and we just thought that was the coolest thing. And we thought that, well, we kind of, this... They had boxing matches here. They had dances upstairs. They had Roller skating gambling. Um, they had all kinds of stuff in this building. It was very much a public house. It already was. So, and we loved that. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to be here, I think. Um, and so back to what I was saying, it's almost like not creating this thing that's foreign and whatever, but it almost just felt very natural that mm -hmm. this is what this was always, it was always a public house. And we just sort of gave it back a little bit, or we're in the process of, of trying to give it back to this town because this this building is is, is special and um, it's like the living room of Slater. It is kind of we mean, we want that we mean for it to be yeah to be where 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 community happens yeah and like I said third space sort of a third space. yes yeah. Just you know, a place where you can go community, do community things. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can buy some coffee, right. you can mm -hmm. buy some snacks. But We have v events here. I mean, we've had sound baths here. Um, if you've ever been to a sound bath, it's, you know, you lie on a yoga mat and they have these singing bowls. And, Very relaxing. Oh, man, it's like a <laughs> massage for your soul. But um, we've had that. We've had um, flower workshops, you know, bouquet um, putting together. We've had a wedding. We have... Receptions, live music. live music. I mean, we do lots of things. This is a rental space, so you can have a lot of first birthday parties. Yeah, yeah, fortieth uh, birthday parties. Yeah, it works really well for that. Um, you know, but we wanted it to be, yeah, broad enough where it a lot can happen here, and it doesn't have to just fit into the box of coffee shop. It could also be, mm -hmm. 
you know, whatever the community or the public needs it to be. So, um, yeah, we did use people to design our logos. Uh, I want to just say something about the lantern, though, because that was sentimental and nostalgic for me. It was my grandpa's lantern that he worked on the Milwaukee Railroad for his whole life. Really, he was he lived it above the what do you call it? The train station um, over when he was a kid, when he was a kid. So he he worked for the Milwaukee Railroad his whole life and I was born on his birthday. And so um, I wanted to incorporate something that represented him and me uh, or him for sure, giving a nod to him. And so my designer hand drew the lantern and we have several of them all over the place. They are his. But it was one of the actual lanterns yeah. that she gave it to, uh, yeah. to our designer and, and she and she drew that. Faithfully so, reproduced it with a kind of retro flair. Yeah. 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 We, Mel likes the mid century kind of look and yeah. I think she pulled it off huge. It looks awesome. Yeah. So that's sentimental. And then our birthday was also the day that we had our soft opening uh, for Rag Bri. And so that just kind of like all came full circle for me. And I don't know, it was just a nod to, to my birthday buddy, Grandpa. Yeah, so. well, and it's again, it's the matching of the old character with the new mm -hmm. modern charm that you're putting. Modern functionality, I suppose, is more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use the old charm with the modern functionality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very versatile space. Very beautiful space. Like, that's one thing I, I do love what you've done with it. Um, I think you've done a very good job of mixing the old with the new, while at the same time having it functional for a wide variety of mm -hmm. different things that make it, you know, that you guys want to do in here. Yeah. Um, so as you guys look forward, mm -hmm. it, this business and all it's become, even though you never intended it necessarily to, what are you really excited for in the next 12 months? Mm great question 12 months um probably I mean my goal was to just nail coffee and get that under my belt before I start adding on other things so I think we've learned after owning the queen machine for almost 17 years in Iowa um, to grow slow and steady and to not go too big too fast because it's just it it wouldn't be sustainable you know you you have to be very intentional and grow slow. So in the next 12 months, I mean, I look forward to, I mean, I mean, we have lots of good ideas, like maybe doing like a Friday happy hour, you know, um, for a couple hours, um, just for pub, you know, which would be more regular, which would be less involved, um, meaning I'm not de cafeing my, my front of the house. I would just kind of we just poured easy drinks, you know. Um, we have Guinness on tap and some beer, canned beers, and um, we could throw a couple of, you know, easy, non, not very involved cocktails together. So I might do incorporate that. Um, maybe an afternoon here and there when the pool's open. Um, I don't know. Do you have any big goals for Public House in 12 months? We're bad at, at these projections. Yeah, you know, we're, not, we're not spreadsheet we, people. Yeah. We almost go one step at a time and we're very instinctual and yeah. we are perceptive, I think. Mm -hmm. We pay attention and um, I don't know. I actually, I'm, it's really a good question. Yeah, a question. And, and, and I'm excited because it just, it feels like, it feels like the next 12 months are going to be extremely exciting. Um, we just had our first pub night, mm -hmm. um, was it two weekends ago? Mm -hmm. And um, although we have plenty of operational wise to work out behind the bar, um, just point of sale type stuff. Having and, never done this before. All of that, you know, we're coming at this, you know, not having everything all, we're not, it's not all buttoned up, it's not corporate. And you we, guys we're, are building we're, a plane while you're flying. The yes, kind of we yes, are. yes, yes, yes. We are. Um, but we have this idea, and I think we're, we're we are doing it. Um, and it is neat to see the support because they really showed up whenever we we try to do anything for the town, they totally meet us. And they there's there was, a, there was over 100 people in here, um, the other weekend, mm -hmm. and we had the the um, we had Brad in here that was playing the guitar and and singing, and he's just so good. We saw him at the Whiskey House in Ankeny the first time. Just amazing, and, it, and he helped set the stage, you know, because it takes a lot of little pieces, doesn't it? It's, I mean, the lighting has to be right, the drinks have to be right, the music has to be right. 
the people have to be, you know, all kind of in the right mindset. And, um, and I'm excited to see what happens in the next year because I know that we're going to get better at yeah. some of the operational type stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to see what happens when we get that out of the way because that was a bit of a, we just have, we have to get better at that. We, I want people to be comfortable, to come in, make themselves at home and to be comfortable and enjoy themselves. And uh, we're committed to that, and I know we're gonna get better at that part. But um, but this room was just filled with like 100 people, and they were loving the music, and it just made us so happy to see that. It yeah. was, uh, it's, it's a, our dream fulfilled, you know, just, just seeing that, seeing it become a public house again, right, right before our eyes has been really satisfying. Yeah, yeah. Did you think, 24 months ago that we'd be sitting here with this? No. <laughs> no, it just happened. It just did kind of happen. It, it took us a year to, to, us. to do it. And, and that year, though, it felt, it did not feel fast. That felt yeah, every, that year was very every little decision. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're restoring something, when you're changing, you know, mm -hmm. every little thing. I mean, there's a, every little, we could talk about every piece sure. of everything there's and nothing was level nothing was square right, right. And, right. and you have to make a decision about all of these mm -hmm. things you know when you're buying a countertop or a coffee machine or a grinder or a yes. sink what sink do you get what um anyway we only have oh, so much space you yeah, know? yeah right a, and we're trying to maximize what we could with what we had and i i'm proud i think that we did good i think i think we'll we're not done. It's just, this is, it's never we live upstairs. We love this and we're going to keep trying to make it awesome. So hopefully, and I think that's part of the magic is that I want people to come in and have it feel fresh and not stale, even though it's an old building, it should, it could still be fresh and different. And Mel does a great job at like, she's always decorating something or taking down decorations and bringing in a new piece of furniture or um, you know, she she would drive to she drove to Kansas City for some of this furniture, and she drove. She just anyway, she, we're we're committed to making it awesome, and we're passionate about it, and we're not even really we're not doing it for you know that we imagine that that there's this huge payday, or it's just because we love doing this, and um, and I think yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. I think uh, it's gonna be awesome. It's only gonna get better. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm excited for you guys. Is there anything else that you would like to leave the people with? Oh my gosh, I mean, I don't even know if any of this was helpful, yeah, you know? No, this was just our story. That's all I wanted. I just want your story. Yeah. I want to know what, I, I am genuinely interested in what people are building. Yeah. I also am very much a natural builder. Mm -hmm. um, I just interviewed a guy on Friday and what he said, like, smacked me in the face. He was like, cure for burnout is a new project. And I was like... Mm. I feel for things, you're right, sir. <laughs> Whether that's the way you're supposed to. Um, but you know, if something feels like it's getting really stale, I start a new project mm. and suddenly that other thing doesn't seem as big a deal. Yeah. Um, but so I, I am just curious and interested in what people are building, where they're coming from, how they got there, mm -hmm. you know, all of those things. And this is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, I just think, you know, I think our, like you said, we're just kind of, how did you put it? We're, um, not intuitive, but uh, kind of just instinctual. instinctual. And I think when you just, we've just kind of determined to do the next right thing or the next thing that makes sense, for you know, you. for us yeah. in business. And when you do that, like, okay, this makes sense. This would be good. This would benefit the community or whatever need is, is out there, then, you know, you can, I don't want to use manifest, but you can create something that serves, you know, that did, wasn't there before. And when you just do the next right thing, things, good things happen, you know, and I don't know. I just feel like we're just walking. We're just taking one step in front of the next and hoping it's right. I'm still shocked. <laughs> Seriously. I, I mean, it feels like, it feels like just no time ago <clears throat> that I was, you know, trying to get a carpet cleaning business going in western Montana and and to you know to have an opportunity like this is is um, uh, I, w I don't take it lightly I, I, I think it's a huge responsibility mm -hmm. to because if we do, if we mishandle or fumble 
our you know our occupancy in this building is relatively short in the grand scheme of things this place is 124 years old now mm -hmm. and um, we will hopefully live to be nice and old but even if we do it's still just a piece of that and I would mm -hmm. like that piece to be one worth remembering maybe and um, so many businesses have come and gone and we've heard about rig and you know they had model t's in here and you know i, I hope that you know people tell stories someday about the public leave, house leave it better than you found it totally. yes yes yeah, so that would make me feel really good mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah, i like it well if people want to find you to keep up with events you have coming up pub nights if they want to stop in for coffee if they need some carpet cleaning where should they go well, if it's carpet cleaning, the best thing to do is probably to email us because Mel is serving coffee a lot in the mornings. Um, our email address is thegreatcleanmachine at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah. And then for the public house, um, we do not have a website yet, but we have Instagram and Facebook pages and usually when I share on Instagram it automatically shares on Facebook so. and she does an awesome job seriously that has we that's I've become aware of that she does really well with the pictures and the, the social media Thanks. it's a it's a strength of hers for uh, sure that's probably all the hours I've spent on social yeah, there's media been, there's been a fair <laughs> amount of practice over the years but uh yeah you can message me there follow, definitely follow those pages to find out when our next you know like pop-up events are, uh, but we are only open Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to noon for coffee shops. So please don't drive over on a Saturday or a Sunday. You probably will be upset. Or at night. But, or at night. But slowly but surely, it is my vision, and I think Mel will slowly come around, that we will more and more turn this beautiful space over to the town and my idea is that maybe we'd be open at 6.30 in the morning and go all day until 8 o'clock at night. Do that all week long and probably take the weekends off. Sometimes. I noticed a slight head shake out of the corner of my eyes. We're just not there yet together. <laughs> this is him. This is him just... But you know what? I just think Coffee it's so shop neat. was it, his idea if, first. So. It, and if we build something that's <laughs> easy to be around, and that's why we did Coffee Shop. I didn't want a... You know, um, we didn't want a loud, rowdy bar, you know, that we have Max and I, I don't even, I just, I like to go to bed, you know? Um, so we didn't want that regularly, but every once in a while we do like to have Let some fun out. and um, I do that so we can, but. I'm noticing him planting these seeds. I know. <laughs> I can see it. He's I can see it. Just like I can see the coffee He's shop. He's a visionary. I see the wheels. And that is, yeah. That it just is, takes me a second to catch up. Yeah. But. When we're together and we're working together, I mean, I yeah, we both say we wouldn't do business without each other, and I think, and we wouldn't do it with anyone else, really. I think he's he's been a great business partner and partner in life, and yeah, you got good ideas. It just takes me a minute to catch up. Not usually I do, but otherwise it seems like you guys are pretty on the same page. Oh yeah, even if it just takes yeah, just a little convincing. On this yeah, side. our personalities are a little different, but the yeah. The, the heart is similar. Yeah. Great. So it's Public House 421 on Instagram and Facebook. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes, that's true. Yes. So then if people want to go ahead and follow along and, like I said, keep up with the events that you guys have as we move into the warmer months and things like that, mm -hmm. I think everybody should definitely go and check it out because it is a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. You can get down here if you are anywhere, you know, passing through Slater or just make a trip. Yeah. Totally worth it. Destination. Yep. People. Come check it out. Yeah, it's a great meeting place. And is there anything else? Keep up the good work. Yeah. What you're doing is a very worthwhile thing, and and I think it's awesome. So I hope you keep going. Very much enjoyed it. But um, thank you for sitting down with me. Of and course. Your stories. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to come thank to your you. house next. I know you guys are invited. I anytime. have to see. You're invited anytime. I can't wait. That's actually a passion too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, like I said, anytime. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah. you.